and John Colo with DiscountJuicers.com. Today I have another exciting episode for you. And uh, where we're at today is I'm actually at a friend's house. And uh, the reason for this episode today is because uh, my friends used this very juicer yesterday to make some pineapple juice. And they're like, here, John, try some pineapple juice. And I tried some, I'm like, man, that tastes kind of funny. It tastes kind of like, tastes kind of like plastic. Is that what plastic tastes like? I was like, man, you got a bad pineapple. Then I thought about it for a second. I'm like, wait, let's take a look at your juicer. Maybe your plastic's grinding plastic in your juice because it's a complaint I get. John, does X juicer grind plastic in the juice? I've read reviews online. Well, in my opinion, you know, most of the juicers do not grind plastic in the juice, you know, but there's some cases that it can happen. And actually, this is one of them, quite sadly enough. And so let me show you guys what happened. Uh, so what this is, this is called a Dash Juicer. It's actually purchased at a Target stores. And, uh, you know, so it's what I call a department store juicer made in China. And there's many of those out there. They're quite lower and less expensive than some of the top brand high-end juicers that I sell. And uh, this is what happens when you buy, I mean, you guys get what you pay for. This is what happens when you buy a cheap and expensive juicer that you want to perform like the big boys, like the expensive ones. I mean... This kind of like is trying to like knock off the Breville that costs like the Breville juice down elite that costs like 300 bucks. So how could a, you know, if you buy a juicer for hundred bucks, how is it the same as a $300 juicer? It's not the same people. So let me go ahead and show you guys what happened. So this is centrifugal ejection juicer. It has a little juice cup, kind of sim very similar to Breville. Actually the look is very similar to Breville as well. It even has a clamp down thing and looks almost the same. Also it's got that wide feed chute. But what happens on these cheap, inexpensive juicers uh, a lot, and even on some of the higher end, you know, centrifugal ejection style machines, this is just part of one of the design challenges with it, is that uh, how this works is that there's a grinding blade in here that spins around. And as this grinding blade spins around, it's going really fast. So this is like uh, literally like, like a file, like if you're filing metal or something down for you woodworker guys, you know, it's a rasp file, it's got rasp, that's not like a raspy voice if you smoke, that's a rasp, so you put the produce in here, it literally micro shreds it, when it micro shreds it, it kicks the pulp out into the hopper in the back, the juice is then flung through these holes, and then, uh, then the juice comes out the front spout, very simple. But what happens on these inexpensive machines and even some other, you know, high-end centrifugal ejection machines, sometimes, if not assembled properly, or in this case it was assembled properly because I checked it out before I used it, um, it grinds. So you guys can see this is the top where that actually goes on and the, uh, the bl blade is underneath here like this and it's spinning around. And if the, um, the tolerances are not proper on the juicer, this is a bit loose, the motor shaft sh shaking, wobbling, you could get this, and what's happened on this machine, I don't know if you guys can see that on the bottom, but this plastic is completely, like, ground down. If we go in here with my finger, let me see if I can break a piece of this stuff off here for you guys. Look at that. Here's a piece of the plastic. Now, what happens is this juicer, the little blade spins around. It spins at a very high speed. They're juicing things, which is supposed to get juiced, but then it also creates friction and then thusly creates heat. So literally it's melting the plastic and at the same time it's shredding it. So it shreds and melts the plastic and it gets actually goes into the juice like I tasted actually only one mouthful. And then and actually my friend had to pour out the juice and thereby like the several dollar pineapple he bought, he just had to toss and he had to throw away so he lost money. And this is the plastic that's coming off that's going into the juice. So this is completely terrible. And, uh, you know, this basically, you guys get what you pay for. You, you know, spend less money in a juicer. You're going to get an uh, inferior product in most cases, in my opinion. So let me show you guys actually why this happened, in my opinion. So we could take off the juicing bowl here. And if we take the, uh, the blade assembly here and we put it on the machine, kind of locks in a place. Now, it locks in a place fairly well, so that's not really an issue. But what the issue is, if you look at this, I don't know if you guys could look really closely, like I'm just shaking that, right? There's a lot of play in there, you know, it's like if you've got a car and your wheel bearing's starting to go bad, like, I don't know if the bearing's starting to go bad on this or it's just uh, cheaply made, so that there's a lot of play, and when there's a lot of play, you get a lot of movement, and you might have had some upward movement, and you might have got some different movements, and then what's going to happen is it's going to shred plastic. And this is a problem, you know, mostly with the inexpensive imported machines, but this can also happen to the higher end centrifugal ejection machines. 
if not properly assembled or if their tolerances were off in the factory that day when it was manufactured or something. So the way you're going to want to know is you're going to want to look at this. Now if you see your um, bottom of your housing here with like stuff that looks like this, this is definitely not right. Now if you have a few blade marks on there, that's alright because sometimes maybe you assemble it, you push a little bit hard, you tweak this a little bit and it kind of gets the blade a little bit. You know, that's just inherent in the design of the centripetal ejection juicers. So for that reason, you know, I'm not a big fan of the centripetal ejection juicers these days just because, you know, they may grade a little bit of plastic in your juice. They actually have a, a problem and a tendency to actually leak around the edges. So let me go ahead and show you guys that. So when this machine is assembled, it's pretty much kind of like this. And uh, sometimes these machines will leak around the edges and because it flings the pulp out, it often actually leaks right down the seams. You'll see dripping and stuff. So it can get a bit messy on these uh, style machines. In addition, you know, these style machines have been out, I don't know, for 20 odd years now. And I look at these machines as like the VCRs of the yesteryear. So the VHS, the Betamax, for those of you guys that know that. Um, those are the items that used to like record TV shows off the TV before they had the TiVo, the Replay TV, and other you know, uh, computer controlled DVRs that make it so easy to record your favorite shows. And these are like those guys, right? They still work like the VCRs and, you know, beta cassette tapes. Some people still use those that are stuck in the, I don't know, 80s or something, 70s. But, uh, you know, there's TiVos and DVRs that are better now. And the same thing with juicers. There's plenty of people that still use the centrifugal ejection style machines. But these are like the juicers of the olden days, like the, like the outdated TiVos. Yeah, they still work and, you know, they work all right for some people. But in my opinion, it'd be much better to get a slow juicer. The slow juicers are the new juicers of the day. I mean, you guys upgrade your iPhone every couple of years, right? I mean, get a new juicer that's going to be up to date with the current technology. And these guys are not keeping up to date with the current technology. The technology in these guys really haven't changed for the most part in a long time. So imagine using like an old iPhone and the original iPhone instead of the iPhone 5. I mean, there's so many different features that the new one has <laughs> that the old one doesn't like Siri. I mean, I wish I could say, hey, juicer. Juice me a carrot juice. <laughs> yes, John. <laughs> but uh, the juicers won't be doing that for you yet. But nonetheless, the technology in juicers has advanced much so that it, it increases the nutrients in the juice. So, for example, some of the data I've seen because these run at a high speed, they tend to oxidize the juice more, basically inject more oxygen in your, your juice. is actually um, not like bubbly or anything, but it does have some air in there. The air actually causes further oxidation because right when you break open the cell walls, oxidation happens. It's like if you scratch your car and you live near the ocean, it starts to rush. Like, you know, probably the next day you wake up and there's rust on it. So oxidation happens as soon as you start breaking over in the open the fiber cell walls of fruits and vegetables. And these guys do the most damage. So in some of the tests I've seen, there can be up to 50% of certain nutrients uh, when you juice the same exact carrot, like you juice one half in this, one half in a slow juicer, the other, the juicer with that, the juice that was made with a slow juicer, has 50% of more of certain nutrients. Not to mention, on some produce items, the yields are also higher. On other produce items, the yields are comparable. On some produce items, the yields are a little bit less than this style because once again, every juicer has their pros and cons. My favorite juicers to use these days are the slow juicers, the ones that run at a lower RPM. Number one, they're a lot more quiet on the ears. These guys run at 10,000 plus RPMs, and some people say it sounds like an airplane taking off in the kitchen. So I like the slow juicers. You know, people are sleeping in this household right now, and if I was to use this machine, I definitely would wake them up. But if I use a slow machine, they'd keep sleeping through, and I'd be able to use that, make my juice, and be happy. <laughs> now I've actually been having to just eat some fruit instead of making any juice in the morning because everybody's still sleeping. But that's all right. Any way you could get more fresh fruits and vegetables in you are a really good way. And in my opinion, most Americans do not simply eat enough fruits and vegetables. And juicing and blending are the best two kitchen appliances that you could do to do just that. Next, let's talk about another reason for the low quality machines. You know, another reason besides the centrifugal ejection machine is that this machine is made in China. It is simply a knockoff. They're trying to knock off the brand name that Breville has made for themselves. I mean, Breville is a good machine. It's a centrifugal ejection machine like this. It's definitely, I've never really seen it great like this. I may see a few scrapes on the bottom of the, of the top, but that's about it because they're, they're high quality machines and they are made well. I wish they had a longer warranty to, you know, go with that because, uh, you know, warranty is, is your assurance that the, it's a quality product. 
And many juicers in this day and age have a long warranty, you know, 10 years, 12 years, 15 years. Those are the longest warranties in the juicer industry. Imagine if your iPhone had a warranty that long. You literally could buy one and not have to buy one for the next 10, 15, or 12 years. Whereas one of these guys have a short 90 day, maybe one year warranty. If it breaks, which they're planning on it breaking because we live in a disposable society and I'm not a big fan of disposable society. I want you guys to make good purchases. Purchases that you're gonna have to make once and yeah, it's gonna cost a bit more, but it's gonna last you a lifetime. You're not gonna have to worry about it, right? So, you know, buy quality stuff, like a quality juicer that has a long warranty that's gonna do better for you. Another thing is that, you know, this is just a cheap Chinese knockoff. So it is a knockoff, you know, they're trying to just pump them out. This company Dash sells a lot of different appliances, you know, and they probably don't really care about juicers and stuff. And I mean, some of the companies that I represent, they only sell juicers. They have a very limited scope of what they make. They make only kitchen appliances to increase your health. They make only juicers. They make juicers and blenders, but they don't like make juicers, blenders, toasters, ovens, and all this kind of stuff. You know, and it's just another commodity form and just another way to make cash, right? They're in it for the long haul, you know. So yeah, I would, I would uh, be wary of companies that, you know, just have like sell juicers and a whole bunch of other items because, you know, if you're selling a whole bunch of stuff, you can't really specialize in any one thing. And a lot of companies are just getting into it these days for the money and, you know, not for changing people's health and getting a quality machine out to people. So besides the Chinese knockoffs of the uh, centrifugal ejection machines, there's also knockoffs of the slow juicers coming out, you know. And once again, you guys get what you pay for. The technology for the slow juicing originated in Korea. They make the best slow juices over there, and those are the ones at Discount Juicers we offer, you know. To date, I haven't offered any imitation you know, uh, slow juicers because it's just not the same. They do not perform the same and I don't want to sell you crap that you're going to have to dispose of and they have to buy another one later because it's not working well, it's backing up and it's giving you problems. So, you know, I thoroughly test each and every unit before we start to offer it. I make videos to show you guys the ins and outs of the machines. I mean, I don't care if one machine doesn't do it all because, you know, the manufacturers would like you to believe that their machine is the best for doing everything in the world, including cleaning your kitchen sink. Let me tell you, it's not. But let me tell you something. There are juicers that do certain functions better than others. And that's why I spend the time to educate you guys. I make videos. I have over 350 videos now on comparing different juicers side by side, explaining them to you, and explaining them fully, the pros and the cons. Sometimes the manufacturers love my videos. Sometimes they hate it. But what I tell all of them is that I am a advocate for the consumer. I'm the consumer myself. I juice, I blend, I eat fruits and vegetables each and every day. This is my lifestyle. I'm living this lifestyle, man. And I want you guys to live it too because I felt the amazing results. And I only know that by using machines each and every day and having my favorites and letting the manufacturers know what they are, what features I like, they can hopefully raise the bar and make it better. They can say, oh, John likes the this juicer right now and that juicer, why does he like that? Well, wait, look in his videos. It makes higher yields, it grinds up better. Maybe we could make ours now with, make, make it higher yields than that other one and maybe we could increase the feature size to make it easier for John to juice. Then if they do that for me, guess what? I get the machines, I get to show it to you guys, I'll use it in my home and then I sell it to you and those are the machines that I'm amped up about. So it's absolutely true. You know, I have a collection of 20 juicers in my house. How many do I use on a daily basis? I use about two of them. Two of them are my favorite. They sit on my counter, you know, and lately I've made a few videos about them. And those are the machines I recommend to you because those are the ones I use. But just because those are the ones that I use the most doesn't mean it's necessarily going to be the best ones for your particular task. You may have different goals than me. You know, I have goals that are in line with my lifestyle and what I want to do, but your, your, your goals may be a little bit different. But I try to point out, you know, this juicer is good for these things, this juicer is good for these ones, and compare them and contrast them uh, for you guys so that you guys can truly learn which may be the best for you. Some are harder to clean. Some people don't give a shit if it's hard to clean. I really care. I got shit to do, man. <laughs> And, but, you know, every juicer has its pros and cons, and that's why I make all these videos for it. That's why I make videos sometimes that maybe talk not so good about a machine to let you guys know the truth, because I'm here to spread the truth. I don't care what juicer you end up getting. All I care is that you start juicing, you start blending, you start eating more fruits and vegetables. So you can be the change in the world you want. You can lose the weight. You can have more energy. 
you could have more mental clarity, you could get less sleep and be more productive in your day, you know, by simply eating our natural diet. And it's the juicers and the blenders that allow you to do just that. I hope you guys enjoyed this quick little episode sharing, a, you know, my friend's experiences and what I saw and how I drank plastic and how to avoid it, you know, by not getting imitation, cheap knockoff juicer, not getting a centrifugal ejection juicer, going for a name brand, you know, slow juicer with a long warranty so you'll be able to juice for years and years to come and change your health. And uh, it's just going to be all good. So check my videos, find the juicer that's going to be best for you, buy it, start using it, and make the changes you want to see. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this episode. Once again, my name is John Kohler with DiscountJuicers.com. Be sure to visit DiscountJuicers.com slash YouTube for special promotional offers for YouTube visitors. All right, this is John Kohler with DiscountJuicers.com. Today I have another exciting episode for you, and we're going to be using the all-new Kuvings Whole Slow Juicer. This juicer is unlike any other juicer on the market, 